Hello everyone, welcome back to SGTV. Today we are joined by Bob Nozida. And Bob has got a, I don't know, what would you call it, Bob? You've got the Future Faradays. Is it a uh, competition or you tell, tell us a bit about what it is? Future Faradays, um, I had this idea a couple of years ago. And uh, it was just, it's a one day enrichment program for electrical students, mainly full time electrical students. Delivered by by industry, not my by me. I'll be there, obviously supporting it, you know, overseeing. But it, it was supported by industry. And it was, uh, a one day, as I said, it's a one day program where different people would come in and talk about what they do. So they would they would they would get to listen to people who you know specialised in controls. People that specialised in. I've got one guy. Um, he, he's fantastic. His company. Uh, install state of the art swimming pools. I mean, not not leisure centres. This guy does state of the art. Well, he'll come in and talk about the electrical side of these installations. Uh, contractors will, will be a part of it. Manufacturers, wholesalers, all involved. So they just come in, talk to the students about what they do, just to raise their awareness about the construction, about the electrical industry, and give them a, a better insight, in, in, you know, into what we do because. Some of them, they go, they go to colleges, uh, they're, they're in that workshop. Uh, sometimes the workshops are not fantastic. They're working on little boards. And I just wanted to give them, a, you know, a, an insight in, into what can be achieved in the industry. But it's mainly as, as, as an awareness, as an intro into the industry. But also, some of them might, might see things or hear things and think, that's what I want to do. Just things like that. That was the idea. It was really to get them motivated and inspired that's really what it is. so to sort of give them an idea of which the, the many different avenues you can take as an electrician yeah yeah i mean you know listen ben i'm really lucky i have some fantastic uh sponsors supporters friends i can call on to do this um you know from all across the uh, electrical industry even things like uh temp services I mean, at 2012, I'll go back to 2012 again. We did a lot of work with Wise Power and we did a lot of work with Wingate. And Wise Power, I, I think, were the next thing. Company. So I'll get someone from Wise Power to come in and talk about temp services because over the years, or since 2012, I think I placed four or five students with Wise Power and they went on and, and, and did fine. So that's never spoken about in college. No one ever talked about temp services. But I always remember looking at the guys at 2012 and thinking, wow, how important that was for the, and it is for all project projects, services. So it's, it's just those little things to not just, because I think in colleges, they're just focusing on the domestic market, which is great, but th there's more out there. There's more yeah. out there for them to get, and, and, and it's not always covered. We, we don't always do that. One thing we're, we're looking to do on this channel going forward, uh, so people out there watching, you know, be, be sure to stay tuned for this kind of thing. But we, like Bob's saying, we want to be um, exploring the different avenues you can take as an electrician because, like you say, Bob, uh, you, uh, the training is very aimed at sort of your, your basic level and then going into domestic, which is fine. So many people have absolutely brilliant um, careers doing domestic, uh, but, they know, but they might not necessarily be... Not, they might not necessarily know what else you can do. And like you say, you've, you've gone and done, you've been a part of history and gone and done work on the 2012 Olympics, which I suppose for you, that's probably, you know, you've got some great experience and great memories of doing that kind of thing. I was thinking this last night. This is a, this is a, this is a true story. I was very lucky that, that the person who, who, who asked me to go and join a team at 2012, the lady called Eve Light, and she wrote the strategy for 2012, Employment and skills. Uh, she then had a baby, and, and we, we, she never came back. I still see Eve, you know, and I speak to her all the time. But strategy for twenty twelve with hers, and we never, no one ever speaks about the, you know, this woman who wrote the strategy in two thousand six, you know. But she wanted me to work there. I knew her. Uh, I think if it had been a year later, Eve had left. I probably had never gone to twenty twelve. It was the sort of person they looked for were ex ex council, ex charity, them them sort. Of, I'm not disrespecting them, but there were but there was two of us. There was two sparks there. Me and another guy. He's still in the business, the same as me. But 
were very lucky. We had her, and she, and she just told us, go for it. If you've got any ideas, go for it. So one of my ideas was the network cabling. And I, I said to her, you know, I've got this, this idea. We don't do it in London. No colleges deliver this sort of training. But when you looked at the media centre, and even in the early days, I'm now talking 2008, we knew there would be 30,000 plus journalists, you know, located in that, in that media centre. So there's a lot of cabling. And she, I remember she just said, do it. And I, I did a presentation. Everyone liked it. And they gave me some funding and I did the training. We've yeah. seen it. The hardest thing was actually finding CNET because, you know, they were quite a, a small company. And they're, they're global, but, you know, they, they weren't on my radar. But 2012 was great because it allowed me to do a couple of things. It allowed me to meet lots of contractors. Uh, some I'm still in touch with. Some we became friends. It allowed me to visit most London colleges. And I hadn't worked in education. Then I was a spouse. I had a teaching qualification. I had a certain. But I... I I never planned on being a tutor. Um, so I visited lot, all the colleges. We, we delivered the London 2012 Apprenticeship Programme, and that, that was Pan London. So that was a bit of an insight into our colleges, each our colleges are. And I used to go there and sit in on lessons, and I used to just wander around. All work, not just electrical, all of them. And uh, I talked to, to students, but I just get a feel, for, you know, how they were. Was it a motivated place? Was it going through the motions? So, so it was. It was great for me. It was great. And the, and the other good thing that came out of twenty twelve, um, I met principal Kathy Walsh uh, of Barking and Dagenham College, and uh, she asked me after twenty twelve to go and work there, go and work for her at Barking and Dagenham College, which I did, and that was another sort of fantastic experience because she's she's a very different she, she's retired now she was a very different principal you you told her something you had an idea you told her she listened she got it and she did it so CNET training if I go back to them I, I sat up a meeting at Bath and Dagenham we've seen it and I said to her they need to be in London they need a presence in London and we can benefit from this as a college and I can remember at the meeting she sat there listened and she looked at me and she said, I like him. He's a good egg. I never forgot that. that. That's not an expression I use. She said, He's a good egg. Well, that was in 2013. They're still there. Yeah. But that's they're the only college in, in the country at the time. And I think they, they probably still are. Had a, a network cabling provider in the college that they could tap into because what he, he offered was the students at the end of uh, their qualification. They could go and do the CNET course. Yeah. Brilliant. So that, that was that was a nice offer because he, he, he used to say to the students, you, you've got the electrical qualification. My industry will welcome you with open arms. So you can come and do our course, OPA and the fiber optic. And, you know, then, then there's an opportunity of employment. So over the years, I've, I've been quite lucky. I've, I've met nice people. I've met, you know, good people. So the 2012 experience, the, the Barkin and Dagnum, uh, and, and then, you know, my last few years working in education, and just really these last couple of years, because as I said, I'm retired now. Yeah. Just I just I just worked on a part-time basis. I, I, I worked for Lewisham College on a part-time basis uh, because I like, I, I like what they're trying to do there, and I like their principle. And I work for NET, National Electrotechnical Training, on a part-time basis. That's my partner for Future Faraday's, Net. Yeah. So when Net asked me to come and do some work for him, I said to him, I've got this idea. So in the last eight months, nine months, we've developed Future Faraday's. Um, it's going to be launched in June uh, as a virtual. It won't be the one day, only a couple of hours, but it's still exciting because it's still the same type of content, people from other, other sectors of the industry. Uh, and it's still that engagement, you know, with students. So that's the idea. And then when things are back to normal, it will go as a full day enrichment program. And it's all like can go all over the country. It's not it's not exclusive to me. And it's not exclusive to you know to certain colleges. Anyone can, can do it. We'll, we'll help. So you know the idea was everyone can roll it out. Yeah. And the people that are supporting it, even like you guys at Skullmore, you know, I'd like you to do a slot. 
and say, you know, this is what we do. Because if I went into most London colleges now and said to students, you know, it's gone, they would know. So it's that about raising their, you know, awareness. Yeah. Oh, they're, they're, you know, they do this and that. You know, I do a lot of work with them um, over the years with, with Yes, Yes Electrical. I know the guys there really well. They're great. Uh, I met Paul Halbert a few years ago at a, a trade exhibition. And it seemed like that. It, it, I will ask Paul to come on and just do a slot to talk about what they do at Yes. Um, you know, this is what we do. We've had electricians come. And now the electricians are account managers. They've had a career change. Things like that. I think it, it does. It gives people an idea of different avenues. Not necessarily on the tools work as well. I mean, some of the some of the staff we have here at Scalmore, the the former on the tool Sparkies, and they go and they've some of them have come from wholesaler backgrounds as well. They've gone from being on the tools to managing wholesalers, being out on the road, all sorts. Um, but before we before we dive into more about the future Faradays. I want to I want to know sort of some different experience you've had that sort of inspired you to, to make other people aware of those avenues if, if you know what I mean. So you, you sort of touched on um, going to, to do like the, the 2012 and we spoke about domestic and lecturing which again they're all avenues you can take but um, from your experience are there any other avenues you've found or you, you'd like to talk to people about? Went to Western Australia in the 90s, in 1989, actually. And yeah. uh, that was an experience because I worked I worked in the West Australian mining industry. But, well, you know, look, look I'm a London, I'm a London electrician. We, we don't have any mines in that. So I went from contracting work, which is what I did. I was a contracting electrician. Suddenly I'm working on uh, copper projects, gold mines, iron ore, nickel, major projects out in the... That I worked in the bush, I worked in the desert. Right. I worked on jobs. The first job I ever did, Siemens, I worked for Siemens a few times, and I'll tell you the, the, the hours. We, we did still six, seven days a week. So, and I, I started that job on the 21st of September. It was the day before my daughter's birthday. That's how I remember. And I came back, if so that was my first stint away, doing 12 hours a day, seven days a week yeah. in the bush. And I can remember the, the, the manager, he was a German guy, he, was, uh, he lived in Berlin, and I lived in Berlin in the 70s twice. And we had this sort of connection. He used to, he used to like to talk about Berlin, and I really quite German. We used to have these funny little conversations. And he was a nice guy, but he told me, he said, if you stay in Australia, this will be your life. So we, we, we stayed for a, a number of years and I, I did these type of jobs. But that was an eye-opener. And I'll be honest, that was hard. It was interesting because, you know, mining's an interesting, uh, it's, a, it's an interesting sector. Very, very different for us. But the work I enjoyed. I didn't, I didn't enjoy being away. What sort of work did it involve? What's like the type of installations? It's funny because they do things like they, they, I remember um, Seaman's job, everything's installed in steel wire armoured, but it's still inside steel conduit. And we all used to laugh. They'd say, This is the steel, you know, on with it. But um, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of uh, containment work, uh, cable train, much, much bigger than what we see here, uh, trunking, much, much bigger than what we see here. Uh, a lot of uh, substation type work, a lot of PLC type work. Um, just interesting. I mean, it, it, you know, the, the only downside, I, I once worked on a Siemens job. Uh, I think it was 52 degrees. It was in the January, I think 1993. Yeah. 52 degrees. I saw a guy to faint. I, training guys, actually, I was working with one and he, he, he fainted in the heat. Um, I used to say to people, that's the downside. You, you've got to remember, if you're out in the desert, some of these places, these these bush jobs, even in the winter, it's still 30, 60 degrees. So it's, it's, it's hard, and these jobs have to be done. There's no, it's too hot today. We'll, we'll, they have to be done. They're, they're on a, a very strict time frame. So um, it, it, it's, it's hard. It's, it's a brutal experience, really. But, um, but it's all experience nonetheless, so isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and I was only young, and I was only 30. So, you know, times, times are different, it, it, you know, 
10 years later, it would have killed me stone dead. But yeah, but the reason I, you know, I left, I left the lecture and went into, you know, employment skills and training uh, was a personal thing. My, my wife had cancer and um, when she'd recovered, she'd had surgery, she had chemotherapy, she had radiotherapy. I wanted a change. And I saw a job for a training officer. And my wife said to me, you've always been involved in training. I've always been on training courses, even in Australia. When I was home, I was always doing training courses. And uh, so I, 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 I fell into what I do now. I went yeah. into it. I, I, my first job was with the worst training provider in the world. They were they, they were a business. Sometimes I sit and think about it and, and I shudder because the, the things they did uh, the way they, they abused the system was horrendous, but got me started. And it was one of those places where you, you got no support, uh, you just got on with it. And some of the people I met then, so this would have been in 2000, I don't know, 2005, I'm still friends with now. We talk, we still do. One of the brickwork contractors that I met in my very early days still judges and sponsors competition for me today. So... You know, as I said earlier, Ben, I've, I've been really lucky. I've got lots of contacts, and we, uh, we, 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 all, we, 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 you know, I, I, I try not to let people down. Uh, I don't try to bombard them with requests, um, but I think people like some of the stuff that I do. They like the competitions that you know I develop and deliver, and 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 they see if I'm doing a day like that, I think they see it as as fun. A nice way of engaging with with young people and education. So, with with the future Faradays, then um, is it just aimed at colleges, or do you do sort of open training for adult learners or anything like that? Well, <laughs> see, actually, when you when you start these things, you, 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 I mean, it was just full time learners. Then all then halfway through, I thought, we have, do you know what? We can reduce this, roll it out as a schools. Uh, encouragement type program so so get learners you know students from school to come in reduce it probably just have one guest speaker um me but we can you know we can talk about the industry what it can offer so that was one option then the then the other thing i, I started it was a couple of weeks ago i saw something on on facebook from from the dry lining forum uh the work they do with the military yeah and i thought wow we could actually tailor this, roll it out to the military, you know, and to give them a bit of an idea because I, I watched some stuff on the internet about, you know, uh, sparks from, from the military that, you know. Yeah, we had we had a guy called Tristan come on the show. Uh, that's who, that's who what did, I watched. Who, yeah, who did his training in the military. And again, it's one of them things you don't initially think of, but it's, it's, it's a way into the industry. It's a, another career progression. Yeah. To show them what, what what the options are. Yeah. So see now, I've, when we finish this, I'll be sitting there writing and I'll think <laughs> about the military, <laughs> the schools, future Faraday's. Actually, it is it, it, very it was very it's very flexible. It's not it's not a tired old program that you know. It, it, it's very flexible, and. The people that I've, I've, I've already contacted, you know, many of them are on social media that, you know, that, that are really uh, proactive, are always supporting the industry. I've already contacted them as potential speakers on, on, on future Faraday. So it's, it's, I have speakers with passion. They're not just going to sit there and go be corporate. They're not just going to sit there and go through uh, a, a script, you know, and, and all put them, you know, sound like a politician. These, these would be young people or they'd be older and they, 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 they've got lots of passion, lots of knowledge. And I think people listening will be inspired. I think that's important, isn't it? Yeah, I listen to them and I, I think, well, if I was a young person then, this guy was telling me if he came to my college and did a masterclass in, in you know, uh, area of expertise, I'd be inspired. So yeah. it was that. I think it's like anyone, you, if you talk at someone or if you talk to someone at their level and, and connect on, 
experiences that they might have and might want. That's that's how you inspire the next generation, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I'll be honest. I don't, I don't talk to students too much now as I used to, because I remember telling us a, a group of students. I lived in West Berlin in 1974, and it was a, a life changer for me. You know, I'm a young boy from um, from South East London, from a large council estate in South East London. And I finished up finding myself in West Berlin, the, the most interesting city in Europe at the time, because the war was still there. And going there was an education. I found myself learning the history of Berlin and, you know, everything that went on there. And it, it, was, it was an interesting place. And this, I remember a student put his hand up and he said to me, that was in the last century. <laughs> <laughs> And I thought, yeah, I won't be telling them stories anymore. I was yeah. just trying to say, you know, I was lucky. I, I, I lived in Europe a couple of times in the 70s, and I went back to Berlin in 77, and it was interesting. You know, um, uh, sort of gave me a look at other things. I met other, you know, I, I worked with people from Turkey, from Greece, from, from Africa then, all different. I mean, you know. It's the same as going to Australia. I worked with female electricians in Australia. I'd never worked with one before in Australia. Plant operators, steel, steel erectors, boiler makers, welders, sparks. You see female trades all the time. Yeah. I mean, I could moth one of the biggest jobs I was on, uh, Hall Pack went past. And I think Hall Pack's thing used to carry 240 tons or one. And it was a, it was a, a woman, a young woman driving it. And I said to this guy, female operator. And he said, 50% of our staff are female operators. And I went, wow. And he said, they're far better. And, I said, <laughs> and he told me this story. I said, why? He said, we've got better concentration levels. There's an incident on the site with plant. It's towards the end of a shift. He said, they don't switch off. He said, they're very, very good at what they do. And I yeah. remember thinking, wow, I see these, these massive pieces of kit go by. I mean, a whole pack now in Australia, I think, carries over 400 tonnes, the ones they've developed. I mean, these are huge bits of kit. Yeah. And you see them drive past, and, and, and after a time, you don't take any notice. But yeah. sparks, as I said, and boiler makers and welders, you know. Gives you a good, good connection, doesn't it? And I find a lot of sparkies I speak to, well, a lot of tradesmen I speak to, a lot of their jobs come from other tradesmen. A plasterer might need a job, or a bricky might need a job, or so on. And that's how people are networking and how it branches out. You know, whether it takes you to Berlin, Australia, or you know, it's yeah, yeah. it's not just a, a singular avenue, is it? No, I mean, I, I I do look back and I think because I had to do an electrical license when I was in Western Australia, so everyone maybe it's slightly changed now, but the licensing is still in place, but. When I was there, you did um, an installer's license, a mechanic's license, they called it, it's an installer. Then you did a fitter's license. But that was for people that wanted to work on controls, you know, motors, stuff, stuff like that. And you had to do an exam, a theory, a regs exam. Then you spent a day in a technical college. Do I think you had to do then eight individual uh, projects. Um Get your license, get, get to get an A class license, which is what I've got. Um, so I did the two, the two parts of it. But um, I can remember, I, I remember now the colleges there. I could remember one of them. It had a PLC unit on 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 the bench for every student, and I didn't know what it was then. I did after because I did, did the course, but. They were very good on getting material from industry. When I asked the tutors about it, and they said, one of them said something to me, I never forgot, he said, but it's no point in us training if we've not got equipment from industry that these students or apprentices don't work on. There's no value in that. Is that the kind of thing that you incorporate into Future Faraday is a bit more practical hands-on? Well, do you know what? Is it, the Future Faraday's... It will develop when it's the one day. I mean, I'll get people to come in and do masterclasses. I'll get people to come in and show, you know, uh, there's a guy that's going to come in and, and show the uh, control panels that he builds, built from scratch, you know, for jobs. But he'll come in and talk about what he does. So, he, he you know, he does controls for air engine units, things like that. But, yeah, I, I want that, that you know, 
So when they go out there, they're not going to be, I've never seen it before, is it? That type of thing. Yeah. So you're well, right. You're, you're right. You do pick up things over the years. You know, I remember the, the, the shooters here in Australia, they're very different. Uh, very, I'm talking now in the 1990, very strict. They was even strict with us when we was an adult class. Yeah. You know, this is, but very uh, supportive because I can remember them saying, you're all here trying to get your license. Uh, we we'll give you as much help as possible. And, you know, when it's getting closer to your practical, you can come in. I can remember they said you can come in every night if you like. We might not be able to give you time, but we allow you to come in and play about with the boards, the test units, things like that. Yeah. So education in Australia is a good experience for me, but I think I probably learned things there that I put into practice later without really, you know, knowing where it came from. Then when I sat and thought about it, I realised I'd seen that in, in, in WI. Yeah. What do, you th what do you think the industry in the UK needs to progress? I mean, we sort of talked about support, which people like yourselves are offering. Um, but what and, and progression in general, like you say, that there's more female sparkies, which is great to see. But in general terms, whether that's education, what do you think we need as a as the industry to progress? This is like the million dollar question, isn't it? And it, it, I'll be honest, it's it's one that we a lot of us I know that talking to people we think about all the time. And I think to myself, it's more industry needs to be more involved in training. Uh, I do say to contractors sometimes, you do much with your, your local college where you're based, because that that would be a step in the right direction. So if I was a contractor of, or not, you know, of, of, of a decent size, it was an FE college just up the road. Go and make, you know, if, if they want this, but go and sound them out. And, you yeah. know, would you like me to come in and, and give lectures, talks with site visits, all those those. Seem little things, but they're quite important. Uh, I think, I'll be honest, uh, and this is this is something that we're talking about at the moment. We need because there's some fantastic tutors on social media, on, on Twitter, and on LinkedIn. I read their posts. Some of them are so passionate and so clued up about the industry that it's. I think, wow, these guys are like scientists now. Yeah. They're, they're, they're a step above sparks. Yeah. Um, Maybe if I'd have stayed in the industry, I might have been with them now, but I don't know. But I, I do read their posts and I think, wow, they're so passionate. If we can get them and education together, that 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 effect might rub off on, on some of the tutors. In, 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 some of them are very, you know, but I, I, I think a lot of them go through the motions times. That, that, that's something that's been, Everyone would admit to, but once you get on social media, the, the tutors, um, I think education needs to listen to these guys, even if it's on the national. It doesn't have to be their local; it can be national. They have to listen to them because they, their ideas. If they give you ten, it's probably six or seven, you know, feasible and, and would work. But yeah. it's, it's that gap. Education doesn't seem to want to take advice. Industry, we need to get them all around the table to talk and share, share best practice, and get something working like that. Yeah. It's not only it's not only the contract; you, you guys as well need to get around the table because it's this thing about you know it affects everyone, doesn't it? Because it, you know if you're a manufacturer, a wholesaler, you know we, we want an industry going forward. If that's going to be you know be one of them where we there's no one in it, sales will be affected and. You know, I don't know how jobs are going to go, but it, 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 I think it's a case where everyone needs to sit around the table and, all, 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 you know, everyone has to, has to listen and, some, you know, has to, to, to say, well, you know, we don't do that. Do, do you do that in the curriculum? No. Do you do this? No. I mean, what I said earlier, you know, even something as basic as that, really, temp services. Someone needs to go in and say, well, this is how it would start on a, on a big job. We would have the temp services guys coming. Yeah. That's what. I suppose if, you, if, you, if you're passionate about the industry, about the job you work in, you almost need to take a little bit of responsibility to give something back. I know everyone works hard and it's, it's hard to find time, 
But if, if you want to see improvement in your industry, in your local area, in your colleges, then you've got to get up and get involved if you can. But, and I suppose that's one way. Like you say, you're going to get education and companies and Sparkies all coming together to, to share that knowledge and experience. Always felt that these ones, you know, the guys that are out there, because let's, let's, let's be honest, you know, the ones that post and, and, and you know, they sort of put their, their, their head on the block, haven't they? They've gone out there and, and done it. And, and I think I'll take now out of all of them to do this. I think to myself, the, there might be someone in education that will see them and think, wow, he's done it. So I, I, I can be like him. Because, yeah. you know, there's, there's some horror stories in education. I mean, you know, I, I, I was at a college a couple of years ago and we started to deliver um, competitions. And no, the, the two young tutors that were there, who, you know, they were great and very supportive and, and wanted to develop this, told by the older ones, you don't want to do this, you're just creating work for yourself. And it's not in our contract, things like that. And I, I remember thinking, you know what? Sometimes you do these these types of things and you it's, it's a nice feeling at the end of it. I've done some DIY SOS type projects with Vinci facilities over the years. Um, always been with Vinci, their supply chain, and a college. So you get students from the college. You never see this on DIY SOS on the telly, do you? You never see a group of sort of college uh, students in a local college, but this is what we did. So we, I, I think the first time we did it, we, we supplied 14 students from plumbing, electrical, p and I don't think we had any carpentry in Uh And they did a, a, a DIY makeover of a children's centre in, um, in Kenya. And it was great. And we filmed it. And I said to all the contractors there, at the end of this, when we film it and we showed the film, you'll all feel great because you've achieved. And they all said to me at the end, you were right. And I said to them, these are good things to do because they, they bring students closer to industry. They allow them to work on a project quite fast. Uh, and sometimes the contractors pick up the students because I've, I've had, we've had it where at the end of it, they'll say, do you want a job? Do you want to come and work for me? Because they've seen them for a week in action. Yeah. Just a couple of hours. It's been a week all day. And the one, the first one I ever did, it was a residential. And I thought this was great. What, what the, some of the contractors did they finished working, they had dinner, then they offered master classes to the students if they wanted them in how to set up a business, what you would do to run a successful business. What about the tax, the, you know, registering the company, buying a van, things like that. And yeah. I remember and to, a, to a student or to, some, to a young person or whoever's thinking about starting out, that could be, that could be the, the point which stops them from going forward if they don't know how to do it. So, to have people giving you that advice, it's yeah. priceless, isn't it? It's priceless because I remember thinking, well, some of these guys started from nothing, most of them actually, and developed really successful companies. And then they're passing on this information. And then they say, to well, it's my card. You know, if, if this happens and you want it. So you, you've created a sort of a network of, of, and I used to say to the students, oh, to the guys, they're very, you know, approachable. So if you've got any, uh, if you don't know something, ask. But this thing over the, the, the week, they developed, Not I'm not saying friendship because probably the age difference, but they developed uh, someone that they could perhaps email and say, oh, do you remember I was on the so-and-so uh, project with, you know, I'm, I'm now doing this. And, and I think, thought that was nice, that you, you could always reach out uh, to someone that, that remember you because, I mean, they were all on film, and we were very lucky. We premiered the film at, the, um, at City Hall in London with the mayor. Um, didn't have the mayor in that. We wanted him actually, but um, but we premiered it at City Hall, and it was a, it, it was a nice event because uh, we'd made the film. Uh, it was a nice film. It's still out there on YouTube actually, um, and you can see. And I think a couple of years later, we looked at the film again. Uh, me and Josephine O'Connor, who's from Vinci Facilities, looked at the film again. And out of all the students, I think they'd all, all, all progressed into careers. 
I mean, one of them became a designer. He was electrical. He went into electrical design. Um, one went into temp services. Uh, so they all did well. I mean, the, the, the P&D, P&D uh, students all went off and, and did well. So, yes, yes. So little things like that. I mean, I always say to people, if I was, if I had, you know, uh, the ability, the, these sort of DIY SOS type, uh, projects, I think they're great. If you if you can get yeah. a contractor to, to want to do one, the last one I did was at a special needs park in um, uh, Canning Town um, in East London. Uh, it's fantastic. It was fantastic. It was uh, close to being closed down because of the, the state of the facility. The park's great, but the toilets and the bathrooms and uh, terrible, terrible. And we just... I just asked Finchie, want to do a DIY SOS? And they came in and looked at it and they just all nodded. They said, we'll do it. And yeah. I think materials came to nearly £90,000 that week. Um, the students were amazed because I remember one of them saying to me, look, oh, these electrical guys, crash, they just do it. And, and it, that, so that was a bit of an eye open for, you know, the speed, the skills that these guys had. So, yeah, all, all, all little things like that. But, yeah. I mean, Ben, I, the, listen, over the years, I've got involved in loads of things like this, you know. And that's the message we want to sort of get across, isn't it? That's, that, that's, I'm guessing that's one of the things you, in Future Faraday's, is, you, is your main driving point, isn't it? Well, it, it, it could happen, couldn't it? I, I mean, someone could come into the future and say, well, actually, I'm here today, you know, do, doing the, the, the talk. But... I've got, a, I've got a project in London. I'm actually looking for, and it could be work experience come out of it. I mean, someone there might say to him, well, I'm really interested. Say the guy that, you know, builds it, he's a panel wire up, um, does, does controls for air handling units. I'm really interested in this. There might be a little link there. How would I start? What would I do? You, you don't know, do you? If we don't do yeah. these things, we're never going to know. Where can um, our audience find information about Future Faraday's? Well, it's going to be launched in, in the, the first the virtual one will be launched in um, June at Barclay and Dagenham College, actually. Um, they've been selected out the London colleges and it will be rolled out over other other colleges um, that we've selected in London. As I said earlier, I mean, it's just, it's almost like a package that we just give to a college and say, this is how it works. This is the, this is how we do it. Um, you know, so I, I'll be honest, if it was, you know, a college saying Nottingham, I'd, I'd, I'd probably struggle for contract in that area. Although I would reach out on social media and ask people, it's that thing about, you know, give them some work to do because they'd have to then, we say, well, this is the timetable. This is how we deliver it normally. So, you know, that's not rocket science, but you need to get someone. Or what we could do is say, well, for that section, We'll ask someone to do it by Zoom. So, you know, the students are there in the room, he'll come on, yeah. say, right. So it doesn't always have to be a face-to-face, -face, does it? It can be, you know, by using this technology. Yeah. Is there, is there a website for it? No, no not, not yet, because it's, um, it's going to be, it's one of them, it's going to be launched, um, you know, all singing, all dancing. But I'll be honest, if people were interested, listen, if, some, if there's, someone's going to watch this, hopefully, and, and then I'd be interested in this, they can just contact me. Yeah. You know, you, you can put my email address at it, robert.mozida at live.co.uk. <laughs> but most of them know me from Twitter. They yeah. know me from, from, from LinkedIn. Well, no, that's good. As long as people, like, like you say, it's in development. It's, it's there to help people. Um, so, you know, keep uh, anyone watching out there, please do keep an eye out for it. And uh, I'm sure they've, they've it's only had to contact me, message me on, on Twitter and say, Bob, I'd like to be involved. Um, and what would I do? At the, you know, and we'd have a chat. And I think that's great because then I'd know that, that person has stepped up, wants to do it for the right reason. He's not ticking exactly, the box. Yeah. It's not that, you know, tick the box and that look good. He's doing it because he genuinely, genuinely wants to. To, you know support the industry exactly and that's what we need more more people like you bob doing this for people out there so then when i'm old now and listen you know i'm nearly 68 so my, my time's coming to i can't do this forever but i do even part-time must come i've been at work since 19 
68, I think. So I've been at work a long time. That was in the black and white days, wasn't it? <laughs> I'm one of the few people that remembers England winning the World Cup. Yeah. Remember watching it in black and white because there weren't colour tellies. So, you know, it, it, it's that. But I'll always be one of those that, you know, on the sidelines, supporting, perhaps linking people together. I'll do it now. Right, Bob, I want, I want to thank you for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure. And I hope anyone out there watching has found this useful. And like I said before, you can get in contact with Bob. We'll put, uh, if it's okay with Bob, then we'll put your email address in the description for anyone wishing to contact you. Yeah, of course you can. Yeah. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed that. Thank you for watching. <laughs> thank you, Bob. <laughs> ben, thank you. Thank you. Right. Listen, I would say to everyone, they're invited on this, but you make it a very nice experience, I'll be honest. Oh, thank you. Because, <laughs> you know, I was a bit nervy this morning, but you do make it a very enjoyable experience. And I want to thank you for that. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. Right then, we'll see you next time. See you next time, Ben.